Come with me under the sea. We're going on an underwater adventure to explore the magical creatures that live in the ocean. We'll visit sharks, sea turtles, and stingrays. Come on, let's go. It's a brand new day inside. We're together. Clap your hands. Come on, let's go. We'll find the way that leads to the treasure. Just take a look in the kaleidoscope. Do you want to go on a field trip? It's when you go somewhere and you learn something you've never learned before. Wow, there's a science center, a zoo. Do something you never thought imaginable. Come on, let's go. And now you can join me on the adventure. Alex in the kaleidoscope. We begin our under the sea adventure by visiting the king of the ocean, the shark. This is my friend Mary, and she's gonna tell us a little bit about what we can find in the shark tank. Well, welcome, Alex. I'm so happy to see you here. So behind me in this shark tank, there are three different types of sharks. We have sandbar, sand tiger, and nurse sharks. Now, when I think of sharks, the first thing I think about is that big mouth and those really sharp teeth. Exactly. They do need teeth so they can eat just like me and you do, Alex. These guys like to eat fish. That's typically what we feed them here at Adventure Aquarium. A shark, depending on the species, they can have between 100 to 300 teeth. Our sharks in our shark realm, they typically lose one tooth a day. So they can typically go through 20,000 to 30,000 teeth in a lifetime. Wow, almost 300 teeth in one shark mouth. Tell me a little bit about those fins that we always associate with the shark. I can tell the difference between them is if I look at their dorsal fins, and those are the fins that you're seeing when you're on your boat. So we can tell the different sharks apart by looking at their fins. Exactly. Our sandbar sharks, they have two different sized dorsal fins, and then our sand tiger sharks, they have the same size dorsal fins. I heard there's an amazing hammerhead shark here at the Adventure Aquarium. Now, most sharks have that pointy kind of snout, but a hammerhead shark is different. We do have two species, the bonnethead and the great hammerhead. The great hammerhead, um, his face is called a cephalofoil. And are their eyes actually on the sides of their head? Exactly. Why? It actually helps them being able to see a lot better. They have a bigger range of view. What does the hammerhead like to eat? Stingrays. Stingrays, wow. Do you feed them live stingrays? We actually do not feed them stingrays. We feed them fish, also uh, large pieces of squid as well. Cool. There are many different types of sharks, and one of the best ways to identify them is to look at the colors and patterns on their skin. What makes each shark actually have different colors, whether it's polka dots or stripes. It helps them just blend into their surroundings. That way bigger sharks or something else won't try to eat them. Now, can you tell us a little bit about their bones and what makes them be able to wiggle and move so smoothly? Their skeleton is made out of cartilage, so like the wiggly parts of your nose. It helps them be able to bend and twist and move when going after their prey. Hmm. Well, it certainly looks like that when you watch them. I'm on my way to the Touch a Shark exhibit where I'll be able to touch and feel these amazing sea creatures. <laughs> so Mary, this looks so exciting. Where are we right now? We are right now, we are in, um, at Touch a Shark. Touch a Shark? That's right, Touch a Shark. Ah! You're not a fish, are you? I'm definitely not a fish. Well, then you have nothing to worry about. The water's kind of warm, and I've got my two fingers. I'm about to touch the shark. Whoa. Wow. It feels kind of like sandpaper. That's correct, Alex. They are covered in little teeny tiny little teeth. They're called dermal denticles. Little teeth? Wow. So this one is all brown, and the one next to it is covered in stripes. Are they two different kinds of sharks? Exactly. So the one you were touching is called a Mexican horn shark, and her friend laying next to her is a white spotted bamboo shark. All right, so they're about this long. And you said these are fully grown sharks. Exactly. So they're not going to get much bigger than this. Nope, only 20% of sharks actually get bigger than us humans. Most of them are either our size or smaller. 
So where can we find these sharks in the wild? Certainly, so our white spotted bamboo sharks and our brown banded bamboo sharks, you can find them in coastal waters in Indonesia, Thailand, and um, Japan. Far away from here, huh? Far away from here. <laughs> and how about this brown shark? Where can you find sure, him? Sure, our Mexican horn shark, you can find her in the Western Pacific. When I play a game I love, I want to do it all again. If I like a story much, I want to hear it read again. I can't help myself, my pleasure is such I must do it all again, 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 again Whoa, I can't help myself, my pleasure is such I must do it all again, 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 again Whoa, when I hear a song I love I want to hear it sung again about 12 inches high, these African penguins are one of 17 penguin species. A species is a group of animals that are similar to each other. Of the 17 species of penguins in the world, only seven live where it's cold. And the African penguins are not one of them. So here we are at the aquarium. 
uh, with my friend Jen. And Jen, what do we have here? These are two of our juvenile uh, African or black-footed penguins. Will they turn black and white at some point? Absolutely. This is uh, their second set of feathers, um, and this is what we call their juvenile plumage. So when they first hatch out of their egg, they have very soft down feathers that are not waterproof. Um, right around, say, about three months of age, which is what these guys are, um, they're going to lose, they're going to molt. All those little soft downy feathers are going to fall off, and this sort of silver coloration is going to come in. These feathers are waterproof, and this is when mom and dad would start encouraging them to come down to the ocean, uh, learning how to swim, and starting to find food on their own. So they all keep this particular plumage till they're somewhere between a year, year and a half, and then they'll grow in new feathers that are the more typical black and white that you think of for penguins. Right. And at that time, they'd be considered an adult penguin. So penguins are birds, correct? Yes, penguins are a bird, although they are a little bit different because they cannot fly. Uh, penguins are uh, very good swimmers, so they sort of fly through the, through the water. Right, and their wings here seem to look almost like flippers. They do use their wings to power them through the water, and then they, they lay their feet out behind them, so they'll use their feet and their tail to kind of help them steer. They do have an oil gland at the base of their tail, and it helps them to be waterproof. It's kind of hidden right back here. And they'll collect the oil from that area and they'll spread it all around on their feathers. Just helps with the water to bead right off. What do these African penguins eat? Uh, they are predominantly fish eaters, but they do eat some different types of invertebrates. In Africa, one of their main food sources would be sardines. We tried to offer our colony sardines and they didn't really appreciate them so much. So we feed the majority of their food is capelin, and then we also offer herring and squid. This is so cool. Thank you, Jen, for sharing You're very welcome. Nice with to have us you. and letting us know about these African penguins. Thanks. in the water. Look, it's a shark on the way. Oh, it must have heard us talking. Now it wants to play. Quick to the window, watch it gliding by as it swims up towards us to see us eye to eye. Smooth as stone, long and dark with its fin and tail. What a big mouth Shot with teeth like nails Swimming with its tail Moving side to side The faster it wiggles The smoother it
Up on our sea life adventure is a visit to the Stingray Beach Club. So what do we have here? Welcome to Stingray Beach Club, Alex. Awesome. There are 200 species of stingrays. Some live in salt water, some live in fresh water. We have four amazing salt water species in our exhibit here today. Can I touch these? Exactly, just two fingers along their back. Here they come. Oh, I got it spin. <laughs> They're kind of slimy. Exactly. That slime actually helps eliminate slack, so it actually makes it a little bit easier for them to swim in the water. It looks like they're flying. It does look like they're flying. They move their wings up and down, kind of like a bird. Yeah, look at that. They're flapping away. Such a unique shape. The ones that are round and flat, they typically hang out at the bottom of the ocean where it's really sandy. Yeah. But then our cow nose rays, the ones that are shaped kind of more like a kite, those guys like to hang out more in the middle of the water column, so they will keep moving. It looks like that's the biggest one you have in here. You're absolutely correct. He is our leopard whiptail ray. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> now, he is literally covered in leopard spots. You got it. Those leopard spots actually help him blend into his surroundings, just like the sharks that touch a shark. Right. What do these guys eat? That's a good question, Alex. They like to eat things like crustaceans, so like a crab or fish. OK, well, look at them. They definitely do like to splash, just like we would if we were out in the ocean or in a swimming pool. Yeah. He's giving me a high five. <laughs> he just came right up to me. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a high five with the stingray. Oh, I think maybe this one. High five! <laughs> Do they sting with that tail or what? How does that help them swim? What's it there for? So their tail is used so they can kind of navigate around in the water. They sting with something that's called a barb. It um, comes to a point and it's serrated on both sides. They don't go out and hunt with it. They use it just sheer protection. Most times when humans get stung by a stingray, it's when we accidentally step on them. Right. So we typically get our injuries from our foot, our ankle, or our legs. But I have never been stung by one of these stingrays before. Do they have teeth in those mouths? They do have teeth. These guys actually grind up their food. Stingrays are at the top of my list for favorite creatures. <laughs> This is so exciting. I am suiting up here and getting ready to feed the sea turtles. Come on, let's go. All right. All right, so you're going to face me on your way down. Two hands. Step at a time. Perfect. All right, well, here we are. We are actually floating on top of the Ocean Realm exhibit. And behind me, I can see sharks, stingrays, fish, and actually the largest creature in this tank, sea turtles. And I'm here with my friend Carrie, and she's going to tell us about these amazing creatures right here behind me. Carrie, tell me about the sea turtles. Well, there are seven species of sea turtles in the ocean. We have two of them actually right here in Ocean Realm. Carrie, where can we find sea turtles? Uh, sea turtles are going to be found anywhere where the water's a little bit warmer, in the Atlantic, and the Pacific. So Carrie, tell me exactly what kind of sea turtles we have here in this exhibit. Here in Ocean Realm, we have two kinds of sea turtles. There are seven that are out in the ocean. One of them's called the green sea turtle, and one of them's called the loggerhead sea turtle. So what makes a green sea turtle a green sea turtle? Green sea turtles actually are have green fat in their bodies because they eat turtle breast, which is green, so it makes them green fat. That makes sense. And the other turtle was called? The loggerhead sea turtle. And why are they called the loggerhead sea turtle? They have a very, very large broad head is why they call them loggerhead sea turtles. Huh. So when I think of sea turtles, or turtles in general, really, I think of them as old and 
like slow moving and kind of the wise creatures of the world. Is there truth to that? They are old. They can get to be up to 40 to 100 years old is wow. what they've seen. And when they're swimming, they do move relatively slow because they're so big, right? They do. How big do they actually get? Well, some can reach up to 1,000 pounds. Wow. However, ours are about 350 to 400 pounds. Are you guys ready? We are going to feed the sea turtles. Come on. So I know that fish can swim under the water for as long as they want because they breathe underwater. With gills. But turtles have a special way of breathing. They breathe just like you and I. Yes, they do. Right? Tell they me have, about that. They, they have lungs just like you and I, and they can go down underwater and sleep for a certain amount of time, and then just like you and I, they need to come up for breath. So they actually hold their breath and sleep underwater? They do. For how long can they last underwater? I think it's probably about three to 10 minutes they can usually sleep underwater. What has made these sea turtles endangered? Well, Alex, a lot of things are making them endangered. A few of them, fishermen are catching them in their nets and they're getting injured that way. Pollution can injure them through get, ingesting anything. Also littering, garbage, they get soda wrappers wrapped around their head and they can suffocate. That's why it's so important not to pollute. It can help save these beautiful creatures of the sea. stop on our aquarium adventure is a visit with the frogs. Unlike many of the sea animals we've seen today who live in salt water, frogs live in ponds, lakes, and marshes. Frogs belong to a group of animals called amphibians. Amphibians are animals that spend part of their lives in water and part on land. My favorite thing about a frog is its tongue. A frog throws its sticky tongue out of its mouth to catch an insect and then snaps it back inside. Not exactly how humans use their tongues to eat. We need our tongues to chew, swallow, talk, taste, even sing. All right, my friends, I want you to repeat after me. I go first. Up, you're gonna put one arm way up high and one arm way down low, and I want you to flip flop just like this. Go wiggly, squiggly, slippery one. How I love my only tongue. Take a deep breath and go. Show it. Show it. Show it. 
What a fun journey exploring ocean life. The animals of the sea are amazing creatures. They're unique, exotic, and beautiful as they swim, float, and glide in the depths of the ocean. Continue your journey of ocean learning and visit an aquarium. Join us next time on Alex and the Kaleidoscope. We'll find the way that leads to the treasure chest.